Hello, my name is Faisal Fassi. I teach in West Bengal National University of Juridical Sciences, that is NUJS. The topic of the discussion is role of law commission and other statutory body in criminal justice administration. In this module, we shall study the functioning of the law commission of India and certain in this module, we shall study the functioning of the Law Commission of India and certain statutory bodies which assist the functionaries of the state and also take up the matter relating to grievances of the common people. Introduction. The state is known by the system of administration of justice. The three most important functions of the state are enactment of law, interpretation of law and the implementation of law. These functions are performed by three organs, namely legislature, judiciary and executive. So the process commences by enacting the law, followed by interpretation and implementation. The statute and precedent should reflect the dynamic nature of the society. However, the organs are either overburdened with works or lack the expertise to demonstrate the changing scenario. The member of the legislative body doesn't discuss matter on a regular basis. As you know, sessions in the parliament are conducted after regular intervals. Moreover, the elected members are not competent to deal with technicalities of various subject matters. Similarly, the judiciary is overburdened with litigations and has little time to conduct detailed research before passing every decision. And the executive struggles to implement the law because of the gaps in the procedural law. So it is inevitable to establish certain institution which can support the wings of the state for proper functioning. Therefore, the state has established certain specialized bodies on ad hoc basis as well as through a specialist statute. So first we will take uh, Law Commission of India. The first one we will study is the functioning of the Law Commission of India, which is perhaps the most important research institution. About the commission, the Law Commission of India is the advisory body of the Ministry of Law and Justice. So the recommendation of the commission is not binding on the government. However, it has created a huge impact in the decision making in changing the law as per the contemporary needs. It is important to note the that the commission is not the creation of the constitution or the statute. It is established for fixed tenure by the order of the government of India. Briefly tracing the history of the commission, it was established under the British regime through a charter of 1833 and since then the government of India has created commissioner from time to time. The importance of the commission was felt most after the constitution of India came into force. The member of the parliament as well as the general public demanded the establishment of the central law commission for keeping pace with the changing plural Indian society by setting up legal order as per the constitution. The first commission in the independent India was set up in the year 1955. The commission of the independent India have prepared 263 reports on different subjects. Coming to the function of the law commission, the primary function of the commission is to conduct research in various areas of law and recommend reforms through amendments or by repeal of law. I have divided the function into seven different heads. Number one, identification and recommendation. The commission tries to identify laws which are not in harmony with the contemporary society. It includes laws which are completely outdated or irrelevant, not in tune with globalization or the constitution of India or otherwise requires changes. A special emphasis is provided for the protection of the interest of the marginalized class. Accordingly, the commission makes suggestion for amendment and con conveys it to the government. An endeavor is met to provide clarity in the provision of law by removing ambiguities and inequities. Second, proposal for new law. The commission suggests the introduction of new laws if new areas come up and replacement of old law for implementing the constitutional mandates including the directive principles of state policy and the preamble of the constitution. Third, connecting link. The commission considers the suggestions given by the experts and applies them in various government departments for the revision of law. Fourth, administration of justice. The commission reviews the process of administration of justice on a regular basis for making it responsive to the reasonable demands of time. In particular, the commission emphasizes on the speedy and economical disposal of dispute by simplifying the procedure, but without relaxing the basic requirement of justice and fairness. The objective of commission is to apply procedure as means of achi to achieve justice rather than becoming an end in itself. Fifth, justice for vulnerable group. The commission endeavor to promote gender equality and examine law which affect poor people 
with the view to suggest measure to harness legal process to cater the need of the people. Research for foreign countries. The commission also works at the request of the government for conducting research for foreign countries. Seven, references from ministers or other ministries. The commission considers references made by ministries and departments through the Department of Legal Affairs in respect of legislation having bearing on the working of more than one ministry or department. Now coming to the working of the law commission, the commission receives re report from the government, then comes up with a working paper after discussion. Thereafter, opinion of the stakeholder and public opinion are collected through questionnaire and issued or discussed in seminar and workshop and in academic institution. The data collected through the set process is evaluated and organized in a systematic manner. And finally, report is prepared. Regarding the contribution of the commission, the contribution of the commission may be classified into two phases before independence and after independence. At the initial stage, the commission was mainly busy in codifying the law. And once the basic laws were codified, the commission inst started conducting research for improving such law and also covered with new issues which emerged with time. In the independent India, out of 263 reports, around 56 reports directly deal with criminal justice. The report covers a wide range of topics. Almost all the, the debatable issues have been discussed, such as whether to retain death penalty, whether to legalize euthanasia, whether to decriminalize attempt to commit suicide, and so on. The commission has proposed special laws for speedy disposal of justice and the protection of vulnerable group, such as witness of a case, women, children, etc. Besides, the commission has recommended for the appointment of the functionaries of the state. Coming to the statutory bodies, now we move on to the functioning of the statutory bodies. The manner and working of the statutory bodies is similar. So if one goes through the functioning of any one of the bodies, the working of the other similar bodies should be understood with technical details. I have taken a case study of two bodies, Human Rights Commission and National Commission for Women. But before that, I would like to give the introduction to the statutory body. The two most important things to note in this regard are, number one, every statutory body working for the advancement of the criminal justice system deals with a specific subject. Human Rights Commission will deal with human rights. Commission for Women deals with issues relating to women. SC or ST Commission will deal with rights of SC and ST. So what happens in this process is that they will be overlapping with the areas of one body with other. For example, issues relating to SC, ST or women may also come to be a human right issue. Second, the working and the power assigned to this commission are similar in nature. They can conduct investigation or inquiry on the basis of the complaint as well as sue motor action may be taken and generally enjoys the power of civil court. So coming to Human Rights Commission, the commission has been established under the Protection of Human Rights Acts of 1993 at the national and state level. Regarding the subject matter, it can take any matter relating to infringement of human rights. The act defines human rights as rights related to life, liberty, equality, and dignity of the individual, guaranteed by the constitution or embodied by international covenant and enforceable by courts in India. The commission shall, shall consider all the covenant and convention adopted by the General Assembly of the United Nations and notified by the central government, including the international covenant on civil and political rights and international covenant on economic, social, and cultural rights. The commission has been empowered with all the necessary legal powers which are crucial for investigation and inquiry. The commission shall have all the powers of the civil code, trying a suit under this code of civil procedure 1908 and is deemed to be a civil code. The power includes calling a person for furnishing information which would be relevant for the inquiry of the case and may utilize the, the service of the officer of the central or state government. Moreover, the commission or ap appointment officer may access to any place if it believes that any document relating to inquiry may be recovered. Every proceeding conducted by the commission shall be deemed to be judicial proceeding. The national commission may also transfer a complaint to the state commission if it thinks necessary. In case of violation of human right, the commission may compensate the complainant or victim and may also initiate prosecution against the concerned person. The commission may also approach the constitutional court for necessary order or direction. The inquiry report shall be forwarded to the concerned government and the latter shall forward its comment on the report including the action taken or proposed to be taken. The report along with the comment of the government is published. The interconnection of human rights and criminal justice system is well known. In fact, most of the cases of violation of human rights are also violation of criminal law. Coming to the contribution of Human Rights Commission 
the contribution of the commission may be studied under three different categories, namely inquiry into the cases, research and publication, and training and awareness. Inquiry into the cases, the commission has been conducting inquiries on various aspects of criminal law. The effort of the commission is really commendable in cases relating to vulnerable groups and atrocities by police, armed forces, paramilitary forces, and other officials. In particular, the commission has provided relief in cases of arbitrary demonstration of power by the official in cases relating to custodial death, torture by police, false implication, and fake and counter killing. To protect the rights of vulnerable group, the commission has played an active role in matter relating to sexual assault of women and children, release of bonded labor, victim of rights, protection of rights of victim in industrial hazard, to name the few. The commission earlier recommended for prosecuting of the perpetrator of investigation by special agencies, including CBI, um, against official of the state, provided interim compensation to victim or his family member, protection to family member of the victim, appointment of the family member to victim at an appropriate level, depending on eligibility and beneficiary. Now coming to research, the commission conducts research on regular basis in collaboration with the academic institution as well as non-academic institutions such as NGO. The objective of the research is to create network in the country for promoting and protecting human rights. Apart from periodical publication of journal, the commission takes up uh, applied research and which could be dealt at grassroots level. The notable completed project in the area of criminal justice administration include the following. Number one, the study of the underlying causes of human rights violation as a result of insurgency in Northeast, the nature of a state response, the use of special laws, violation by non-state actors, and practical suggestion, recommendation for improvement in situation. A research study in Tripura. Second, implementation of the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act of 2000. Third, action research on trafficking in women and children. Now coming to the part of training and awareness, Finally, the commission sensitizes common man about human rights issues through various program and provides training on a regular basis to various professionals, including academician and those who are working in the criminal justice system, such as police official, member of the bar and the bench, prison officials and paramilitary forces. Now coming to National Commission for Women, the commission was set up under the statute of National Commission for Women's Act 1990. The primary function of the commission is to evaluate the development of women and to advise the government to, on policy matter affecting women. It examines all the constitutional and legal safeguard provided for women and their implementation and, rec and recommend for improvement by presenting an annual report to the central government. In particular, the commission can take up special studies in matter arising out of discrimination and atrocities against women. It also suggests remedial action after inspecting places used for custody of women including correctional home and remand home. Moreover, it facilitates redressal of grievance by funding litigation and conducts sensitization program for professional and common people. The commission has performed laudable works in the area of criminal justice system. In order to fulfill its mandate, the Commission has created six cells, namely Complaint and Investigation Cell, Legal Cell, PPMRC Cell, Public Relations Cell, Non-Resident Indian Cell, and North East Cell. In the context of criminal justice system, the first two cells are important. The Complaint and Investigation Cell processes the complaint received by the Commission. As per the record of the Commission, the complaint relates to domestic violence, harassment, dowry, torture, desertion, bigamy, rape, refusal to register FIR, cruelty by husband, deprivation, gender, discrimination, and sexual harassment at workplace. The commission ensures that the police expedite the process of investigation and constitute inquiry committee of expert for dealing with serious crimes. The legal cell deals with, deals with the legislative reform and participation in court cases. It has proposed new bills and amendments in various provisions of criminal law. Notable among them are Number one, the Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace Prevention, Prohibition and Redressal Act of 2013, the Prevention of Crime in the Name of Honor and Tradition Bill 2010, and the Protection of Domestic Violence Act of 2005. The Commission also suggested various amendments. Some important ones are as follows. Number one, amendment of Section 198 of CRPC for removing restrictions on lodging complaint 
in respect of offence of bigamy under section 494 and 495 of the IPC. Second, amendment of section 320 of CRPC for making offences of enticing or taking away a married woman with criminal intent under section 498 of the IPC. Amendment of section 1 of the indecent representation of women prohibition act of 1986 to make the definition of derogatory representation of women wider and also recommended for severe punishment to the culprit. Number 4, amendment in immoral traffic prevention act of 1956 for increasing the age of majority of the child under the act to be raised to 18 years and also suggested that the government should take up correctional measures for rehabilitating women and children involved in prostitution among other things. Number 5, amendment in medical termination of pregnancy act of 1971 for conducting consent for obta rather obtaining consent of women in every case and stringent punishment to the violators. Number 6, amendment in offences relating to sexual assault including rape, most, most of the suggestions have been incorporated. Number 7, amendment in the Dowry Prohibition Act of 1961 for better clarity of the concept of dowry. The notable contribution in judicial decision making includes cases of number 1, Bharti Gang rape case where the commission took up the matter so moto and appointed a special public prosecutor and Ramshri case where the commission intervened for commuting death penalty into life imprisonment. To sum up, the function of the Law Commission of India and other specialized bodies including National Commission for Women created under the statute are very crucial for the development of criminal justice system and for keeping pace with the dynamic nature of the society. Ideally, law should reflect the contemporary society. This agency strives to update the law by collecting the opinion of the public and stakeholders. They also contribute in the process of enforcement, even though the recommendation of these bodies are not binding per se, they have played very critical role in shaping the process of legislation and precedent. Thank you for the listening.